Oi oi, hello fantastic people. Every Saturday I'll publish an update of my week of chess. Today's video is that update and it will be the last two weeks I'll be talking about because I haven't done this for a while. So, if you like this video, do me a favour, click the like button, it's relevant. If you're not already subscribed, you know what to do, click the subscribe button, it's on the tin. And obviously it would make a massive difference to me if you would share any of my videos with any of your chess loving friends because that's... The, that's the, how I grow the channel and how I reach a bigger, wider audience. So thank you very much. From today, I'll be making five videos per week. So on Monday, we have Rapid Game. Tuesday is a creative video. Ooh, what's that gonna be? Thursday, another Rapid Game. Friday, live streaming, cheeky. And on Saturday, you'll get this weekly update. Because I stopped, this is the last bit of uh, housekeeping. So before, because I stopped making videos, I'm not yet making any money from YouTube and I'm eager to make a like valuable enough offering to you as viewers to do that, to make money. So I'll be making a membership program through YouTube and possibly through Patreon as well in the next few months. And I'm currently designing what that would look like. So a program of videos, features, which would make it worth your while to sign up to become a member. Did you even know you can become a member on YouTube? Not many people are doing it. So right now, I have just a few questions of you related to that. Are you currently a member of any YouTube channels, not just a subscriber, but a paying member? Oh, is that a thing? It's a thing. Do you use Patreon? And are you a member on either Patreon or YouTube of any chess creators channel? Cheers. Thank you very much for that. Lastly, what's the thoughts that that's it, right? Four bullet points. Getting back to working hard, winning a lost game, playing wide live. I'll explain what that means. And knows knows all. Again, I'll explain what that means. So number one, getting back to working hard. My last couple of weeks have been good in that I've slowly started getting back into my routines. Now I wish my routines were already watertight and super good but they're not. So I had undone a lot of the good work that I'd done previously in terms of building up sleeping habits, regular times, getting up early, eating regularly, exercising regularly and frequently, and working to a schedule each day, which sort of encompasses all of those things. But yeah, working to a schedule is a big one. It takes a lot to build all of those things back up. And I'd say I'm about halfway there, but being halfway there is probably 90% of the difficulty. So I'm patting myself on the back. I'm happy with that. So I'm pretty excited to get things uh, into place and working hard again. Number two, winning a lost game. So last week I played my second classical game over the board for my new club. So over the board meaning like in person against an opponent sat across me and it was a home game. Our team plays in a lovely Quaker meeting house. It's a lovely building, very peaceful, perfect for a game of chess. Uh, lots of pews on your way in. Nice. I was white and I played the advanced variation of the French defense or against the French defense, which my opponent played. I played an early knight h4, which I thought was a killer move, but it was actually a misguided move because um, I was playing white. So black can basically ignore the threat of the incoming queen, take on e3 and the combination of my threat not being as potent as I expected and I'd calculated erroneously and black taking my now undefended center pawns is bad news i followed up with another couple of mistakes as you do you make one mistake and then you make another couple of mistakes as i planted my knight on g6 thinking they can't take that but actually they could pin that they put the uh the bishop on e8 where the king now wasn't and disaster i was uh, i was screwed so the nail in the coffin of mistakes was me mess missing that they could play f five which now interferes with my bishop's defense of the knight and just wins it and luckily my opponent also missed f5 they actually played it a move later and uh, after seeing my queen was attacking e6 so they played f5 and they missed that i could just take the rook with the with the knight which they sort of could take could have taken or could have trapped the uh, move before I ended up winning, but I have a lot to learn from these calculation errors, which I'll come into in my last bullet point. Knows knows all, that's the number four. But number three, before we get to number four, playing wide live. A bit of a silly headline there with that one, isn't it? So I now live stream, that's the live bit, on Fridays at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. GMT. It's in the schedule, so you can find out on the live tab on my channel's page. 
and I'm currently playing viewers in either 15 plus 10 or 10 plus zero, maybe just playing in the pool as well. And I'll start to create different formats as I get into my, like, into my stride with that. So look out for some different shows appearing on Fridays, 2 p.m. GMT, as I mentioned. Get involved, say hi in the chat. I'll say hi back like this. I've lost to an 800 and beaten a 1900. So I get to play a very wide range, that's the wide, a very wide range of abilities than just hitting the new game button on chess.com or Lee Chess, and I'm enjoying that. I certainly would like to play more consistently, losing to an 800, winning to a 1900, uh, but it's fun and I reckon it's gonna help me improve my chess quite dramatically, mostly playing the stronger players, not playing the weaker players. Uh, but they were they are weaker if you, if you lose to them. Okay. Final bullet point, number four, knows, knows all. Dr. Michael Franco, take a bow, AKA knows, knows all, is a very strong chess player. He's an experienced teacher of chess and mathematics and a creator of some of the most popular Lee chess studies in the world. He's also appeared on the Perpetual Chess Podcast. It's quite fun to say, but it's quite difficult to say. The Perpetual Chess Podcast, uh, ben Johnson's podcast. Uh, he's appeared on that a couple of times, actually. I've only appeared on it once. I feel left out. And he's a very nice man overall, both Ben Johnson and Michael Franco. Dr. Michael Franco, sorry. Michael Franco. I'll link the studies and the interviews in the description so you can go and watch and, and look at those. So, Michael, would you want... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was such a ridiculous preamble, but it's, it's good, it's good. So, Michael was watching my stream uh, last Friday. He mentioned that he'd noticed me repeatedly making the same types of calculation errors and in a few of my videos and offered me like a lesson, basically. Like he'd go through some of these ideas with me. And so after the stream, we solved a few puzzles together. And the theme of this session was calculating broad, not deep. So that's very much like in vogue in my head at the moment. Like that's in fashion in my mind because I've heard it a lot, but now I'm like really, really trying to live it. I'm trying to do it day to day and I'll tell you what it means. So firstly, broad, not deep. Well, I've also forgot to mention, so I'm doing broad, not deep, and then also calculating concretely because apparently I don't do that either. So firstly, broad, not deep. In short, rather than calculating a small number of long variations, deep, I should be calculating a large number of short variations. And to do so concretely, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay, otherwise, I will basically just continue to make the same kinds of errors again and again, because my deep calculations in the long, or my long calculations, there's gonna be a, me a messy, a messed up like miss <laughs> I can't speak seven move variations where I go this and this and this and I'm a genius I get checkmate will be never shown to the world because actually on move two of that seven move variation my opponent didn't play that move they didn't take they just sidestepped and now I'm losing but that's an example so to allow me to do this efficiently in my games I need to keep a constant track of all the relationships between all of my pieces and my opponent's pieces both internally, like just my pieces as they relate to each other, but also then my pieces as they relate to all of their pieces. It's a lot to keep track of, uh, but I need to try and do that, mostly in class classical games, like when I've got enough time, and I need to update this catalogue of information in my mind as the pieces move about the board, so it can, needs to be constantly updated. Every move, there's a potential change in that information. And the idea is this. I, It's essential that I have the most gloriously rich picture, like an amazing colorful painting of the position in my mind and to challenge myself to find every detail. And I'll never find every detail, but that's the goal. I should be aiming to find every detail. That way, when I come to decide on candidate moves for me and my opponent, I can use this already established understanding of the position to find those which are most forcing, basically. That's the idea. Secondly, and I promise you, this is the last thing. So calculating concretely, Michael noticed that I tend to calculate vaguely, both in terms of me jumping between variations and without much structure in my thoughts. And you can imagine that's 
how I live in my life and that I do a bit too much general plan making like I want to get my queen over this square or I want to push my pawns in the center uh, and not enough calculating like okay knight b6 bishop takes b6 uh, c takes d6 and then queen b4 check like that then that then this and then that that all of what I just said then is what I need to do more of and not just sort of like uh, that should happen in general it was such a great session so thank you very much to Michael I'm going to start implementing it straight away I have already started implementing it in every game I play and I think it could have a massive impact on my ability as I think I've got a lot of the knowledge relatively but I'm just terribly inconsistent in actually implementing that knowledge so let's see I will give you an update next Saturday that is all from me I know this has been relatively long I hope you're having a lovely day a lovely weekend in general and that you're with friends or family and I want to hear how your chess is going so please give me your weekly update in the comments. All right, chat soon. Bye!